Hello fellow XBMC users and welcome to another tip of the week. This week we're going to start covering something near and dear to almost every XBMC user's heart, adding videos to the library. Uh, and not only are we going to add videos to the library this week, but we're going to try add, to add videos that are shared over a network uh, folder. Uh, this is beneficial for a great number of XBMC users because most people tend to keep XBMC on a small, uh, you know, inexpensive NVIDIA Ion drive, you know, in the future we're going to be moving to XBMC for Android or XBMC for the Apple TV, and in all those situations, keeping your files on a separate computer is absolutely crucial. Uh, so for those purposes, we're going to go ahead and get started. First, go ahead and highlight videos and files. Actually, you can highlight either one, but we'll go ahead and do it the easiest way. Click Files, and right now we don't have any videos added, so we'll click Add Videos. Then, we browse, and now we have a number of options that we can choose. If you're comfortable using, for example, the network file system or NFS uh, or UPnP, you're welcome to try to use those those types of shared folders. Uh, the only thing is, you have to be very certain you know what you're doing, and that's doubly true for UPnP. The real problem with UPnP is if you aren't 100% confident in the server that is providing the access, then whatever that server is may have previously scraped your files in such a way that they're named wrong uh, or otherwise they're incorrect in some way and XBMC won't be able to compensate for that. So uh, in our opinion usually the best way to go is to use something like Windows Network or SMB which doesn't show you any metadata it just shows you the straight files. So we'll go ahead and click that. Then we'll navigate to our media PC and then, as you can see, we have a number of folders to choose from. So I'm going to choose the large folder that has an awful lot of movies in it. So we click OK. And OK again. You'll note the name for this media source is Movies. It can honestly be anything you want. It just has to be something that you're comfortable with and you'll remember basically what's in there. And you click OK. Change the directory contains to Movies because this was a movie. Uh, movies are in separate folders, that's correct. I keep all of my movies, each video file is in its own folder. Uh, scan recursively, we'll just leave it checked because it could be useful, there's no real harm in it. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Do I want to refresh info uh, for all items within this path? Since it's the first time we've been through, yes, we may as well do that. And now it's scanning for new content. This should take a while, so we'll go ahead and pause this video, come back to it in a minute. Okay, and we're back. The system has finished scanning our files. I've already set up XBMC to show movies as a separate folder. Uh, that's something you'll do in settings, and I'll show you that in a bit. Uh, but for now, what I'd really like to do is talk about some of the problems that can occur while scraping movies for the first time. To begin with, you need to be very aware of what are called NFO files. Uh, these files uh, tend to describe whatever the video is about and usually reside in the same folder as the video. Um, XBMC will almost always attempt to accept and follow whatever is in the NFO uh, instead of what might be seen on the internet from whatever site it's scraping from. So if you have uh, a poorly named NFO or an old NFO that doesn't pay attention to modern things like, for example, collections and things like that, then you might consider either updating your NFO using an outside media managing software or simply deleting the NFO and letting XBMC do the media managing for you. Uh, I've done just exactly that actually just recently deleted all of my NFOs and so as you can see almost immediately XBMC recognizes an awful lot of collections in my files. Unfortunately there are a couple videos that didn't quite play out the right way 
uh, in this scraping. For example, the best of Borat is definitely wrong. This is actually supposed to be Borat the movie. So to fix that, all you have to do is hit I or whatever button you might use to get to the info for the video file you're interested in. Go over to refresh, hit enter, and wait for the movie database to be queried. And then go down to the correct named, uh, the, the correct movie for your file. Select it, allow XBMC to load the details, and there you have it. The update with all of the correct metadata. Okay, so now we've successfully added our movies. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with our TV shows. Once again, let's go back to the Files folder, because that's simply the easiest way to access the Add Videos button. We'll add videos. Once again, we'll browse. And once again, we'll look through the Windows Network SMB folder. To work Group, Media PC, and Television. We'll add Television. And now we actually have a number of television folders to add because uh, my television media is kept on multiple drives. So we can keep this all as the same source. We'll click the Add button, browse again, go to Windows Network, Work Group, Media PC, and Television 2 will add. And there we have it. Now we have two sources, uh, two folders, both in the same source that we're going to name television. We click OK. This directory contains TV shows. Uh, it contains multiple different TV shows, so we will not click that button. Uh, and we obviously want this to continue updating in the library, so we'll click OK. Do we want to refresh info for all items within this path? Yes, we do again. And we'll get back to you the second we finish with this. All right, and we're back. Uh, we've just finished scraping the television shows. Uh, now, there are a number of caveats that I should probably mention with television that go along with the caveats for TV, with, for movies. Uh, specifically, television has a lot of issues with episode ordering, uh, which is to say, for example, Andy Richter Controls the Universe has approximately four or five different ways to order the episodes. Each of them is totally different because of the way the episodes were originally aired. Perhaps a more famous version of that for all you Joss Whedon fans out there is Firefly, which had 16 episodes, oh, excuse me, which had 14 episodes, um, and those episodes were recorded in all kinds of crazy fashion. Okay, so one last thing before we finish this up. As you may have noticed when I was adding videos, uh, and we go to Windows Network, Work Group, Media Center, there were a couple TV shows that weren't in the main listing. For example, Red vs. Blue and DuckTales. Now, this may be because DuckTales was just shared at an earlier date and is still in the TV folder. Honestly, there could be any number of reasons why it's separate. I actually already have DuckTales in the television show library. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the settings for if I didn't. So we'll click DuckTales, we'll click OK, and OK again. This directory contains TV shows, and this time around the selected folder contains a t single TV show. We would click OK, and we wait for it to scan just this show. Uh, it would find the name, of course, as DuckTales, and everything would work itself out. Well, we don't have to do that since we've already added the show all right here. So now let's make sure everything works. First, we'll go to the most common video files ever presented on YouTube, as far as I can tell, the Blender Open Movies, which you can show just about wherever you want under Creative Commons. Click to open them. Uh, and we've got two of them here. I'll go ahead and open the less frequently cited one just because, you know, people don't often see it. We'll go ahead and click play. And there it is. Elephant's Dream by the Blender Foundation. Okay. Now we're going to do one last thing, just so you can see how to get movies and TV shows listed separately up here, which is not normally how the setup works. We'll go down to Skin, 
and then we'll go to home window options and as you can see typically this starts out uh, as hide movies and hide TV shows and when you do that they're just listed down underneath videos uh, so we'll go back to skin unhide them and now they look great one last thing before we go if we change the skin by getting a new skin from our skin repository and for example we could probably pick uh, you know just about any one of them let's go ahead and pick neon because I'm fairly certain this one actually does have uh, what we're looking for once it finishes downloading we'll be able to look at a very different way for presenting TV shows. So let's give that a second and we'll come right back when it finishes downloading and you'll see what that looks like. Okay, we've just about finished downloading Neon. Now what's going to happen when this download finishes is we'll be asked if we want to switch to Neon. Up, oh, it's finished downloading. Yes, we would like to switch to this skin. Ah, and it has been switched. Excellent. So now let's click on TV shows. And let's click a little bit more. Ah, view landscape. Now thanks to a number of behind the scenes programs and the website fanart.tv, which you should all visit. It's really cool. We are able to download the actual logos for each of the uh, each of the different television shows. Including my niece's favorite Dora the Explorer. So to do that using Neon, you can simply go to get artwork. Uh, I've already downloaded all the necessary artwork, but it still works. You click Get Artwork. Artwork Downloader is searching for new artwork. It's found some extra artwork. Excellent. It's downloading it, and it's closing. And so, in this way, we proceed. So I hope this episode was helpful for those who weren't quite sure how to add TV shows and movies to your library. Hopefully this gives you kind of an idea of just what you can do with XBMC. Really, XBMC using a file system on another computer can be an absolutely incredible experience to view and to use. Have a good day.